Have you ever wanted to ditch those fiddly limit switches? This little clicky thing tells most printers and other machines their home until it snaps or its wires get all tangled up in the moving bits. With just a four pound stepper driver, your project can feel the range of its motion and we can forget about limit switches. This demonstration of the program shows how the stepper driver can find the two ends of its travel using just its normal motor wires and then return to center. Hi, I'm Lewis and this is DIY Machines, a channel where I share with you step by step how to recreate amazing projects. So why is this such a good thing? Well, first the pros. You don't need to worry about adding additional mounting points to your project designs. There are less components to use and pay for, and you don't need to run long dangling cables to one or both ends of your carriage or other moving platform. And of course, there are always some cons. You're going to need to get yourself some stall guard capable drivers, and the accuracy of the homing isn't so good at slower speeds. This video has been made possible thanks to PCBWay, whose services I will tell you about a bit later, and Andrea Favero. I hope I've got your name right. He's a kind and clever maker who has written and shared the code using this demonstration. First, let's quickly go over some of the basics of a stepper motor, as this is going to help you understand some of the concepts later on. Now stepper motors come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. Most stepper motors have around 50 teeth on their rotor. The rotor is simply the rotating part of the motor. The stationary part, which is a collection of magnets surrounding the rotor, is called the stator. When the stator's coils are energized, the rotor rotates step by step, hence the term stepper motor, and locks itself into the position of each of the new changing magnetic fields. Now, stepper motors generate back EMF as they move. This is going to be important later. Back EMF is simply a voltage produced when the rotor moves through the motor's magnetic fields. The faster the rotor moves through these fields, the more back EMF is generated. As some motor drivers, such as the TMC2209 that we're using for this demonstration, has some internal sensing circuitry that can monitor this back EMF. This can help estimate a load on the motor or detect a stalling condition. Just a quick note here on stepper motors and their naming convention. Now, stepper motors are usually referred to as NEMA 17, NEMA 23, NEMA and some other number. This has got nothing to do with their torque, holding strength, speed, step size, voltage, current capacity or anything like that. It's merely a standardized number representing the spacing of the holes on the front plate of the motor, so how you can expect to mount it. NEMA is an acronym which just stands for the National Electrical Manufacturer Association, which is the body that created this standard for the faceplate sizes. We're going to briefly go over how to put together the physical circuit now. And to follow along, you're going to need just a few components. This one I have put together on a breadboard using some jumper wires following this wiring diagram. As always, you'll find links to all of the individual components and some kits available on Amazon and Etsy down below this video. Now, to make things even tidier, I have created this little PCB, which holds all of the components together nicely without that little snake bit of wires. Now, if you want to assemble one of your own, you just need to insert the components through the board where they're labeled and solder them into place. The PCB will allow you to power the circuit with either soldered wires, wires attached with a screw terminal or via a DC barrel. You're also able to attach a breadboard at the bottom, giving you access to all of the pins of the RP2040. To create the stalling condition, you can keep it super simple and just carefully grab a hold of the shaft of the stepper motor. Or if you wanted to and have a 3D printer, 
you can 3D print this little mount which attaches directly on top of the stepper motor. And allows you to move the pegs to set up different demonstrations. I want to take a quick moment to tell you about this video sponsor, PCBWay, who, as the name suggests, manufacture PCBs. I've been using them to do this for almost five years now for my projects and hobbies. But did you know that's not the only thing they do? They can also provide you with PCB assembly, 3D printing with all sorts of materials and processes, sheet metal work and CNC machining. This means you could have everything you need manufactured for your project by PCBWay, making them a true one-stop solution. Swing by their website at pcbway.com and if you're a new customer, they'll give you a $5 welcome bonus. And being as five PCBs under 10 centimeters squared only costs $5, you literally only need to pay for the shipping. So that's pcbway.com and thank you for sponsoring this video. Just before I go ahead and explain StoolGuard to you, I've already gone ahead with my project here and have installed the program onto the RB2040. This is so that I can show you the demonstration so you know what to expect and can see proof of it working. I'll then explain a bit more about StoolGuard to you before showing you, of course, how to add the program to your RP2040. And we'll then go over the code, explain a little bit about what's happening, and I'll show you how you can customize it for your situations. And then you can go ahead and create your own projects based upon Andrea's code. The following is the same if you built your circuit using the breadboard or with the PCB. To trigger the homing sequence, you click the momentary button. The stepper motor will first travel at 400 Hz in one direction until it detects a stool, then back in the other direction whilst tracking how far it is moved. Once the other end of its travel has been detected, it will move itself to the center of its available range to demonstrate the fact that it has found the two limits of its movement. We can also try some different stepper frequencies using Andrea's code so that you can see how StoolGuard performs at different speeds. If we click the button a second time, the demo will be repeated at 1200 Hz. The onboard LED will flash green when the StoolGuard value has been crossed and red when the stepper is centered. To mix up the test, we can move the two end stops and click the momentary button again. The stepper will go ahead, find the two new positions for the end stops and return to the center to prove it's worked. Of course, sensorless homing isn't just for rotational movements like this. You can also use it on a linear movement such as this slider rail here. Ooh. Cool, huh? So StoolGuard is a feature of certain Trinamic stepper drivers, which is able to detect when the motor has stalled. It does this by cleverly monitoring back EMF, which you'll remember we mentioned earlier on in this video. It monitors the back EMF whilst the motor is in motion and compares this with some expected patterns of back EMF. So a stall occurs when the rotor inside of our stepper can no longer follow the commanded magnetic steps, usually due to mechanical resistance, an obstruction, or perhaps too much speed. When this occurs, the expected back EMF pattern drops or becomes unstable and unpredictable. Stall guard then can detect this change and act accordingly. So the driver is continually generating a stall guard result, 
which reflects the load on our motor. As the load increases or a stall occurs, the value of the stall guide result decreases. In our demonstration, we're monitoring this value of SG result using single wire UART, which is a communication between the stepper driver and our microcontroller. We then use our own logic inside the RP2040 to evaluate whether we think a stall has actually been detected. Alternatively, you can define a variable on the driver itself called the stall guard threshold. When the driver sees the stall guard result fall below your stall guard threshold, it will flag this up on the diag pin or diagnosis pin on the driver, which is this one here. One other value worth knowing is called the velocity threshold. This is a value you can define on the driver which sets the lowest speed at which stall guard will run. This is because at slower speeds, stall guard is not as effective. So in short, stall guard can monitor how hard your motor is working by monitoring the back EMF. Now, if the effort spikes or the back EMF suddenly drops, then we can assume that the motor has stalled or is at least skipping steps. Five Python files written by Andrea control the whole demo. So let's go over how to upload them to your RP2040 and we'll step you through the code so you can get a better sense of what's happening. To follow along, you're going to need to download both the free Fonny editor and a copy of MicroPython. Just make sure that you download MicroPython version 1.24.1. You'll find links to both of these down below the video, as well as the code on Andrea's GitHub page. To prepare the RP2040, connect it to your PC whilst holding down both the boot and reset buttons. Once connected, release the reset button, but continue to hold down the boot button until it mounts as a removable drive on your computer. Next, you can drag and drop the micropython.utf file onto this removable drive. The RP2040 will then disconnect and reboot itself whilst installing MicroPython. Now you can open the Fonny editor and connect to the RP2040 by selecting it from this box in the lower right of the editor's window. Now heading over to Andrea's GitHub page, we can download the code and open these up on your local computer in the Fonny editor. In the Fonny editor, we can open the files pane, which you'll find under the view menu on a Mac. Navigate to your downloaded Python files, select all five, right click, and then choose upload to, to copy them to the RP2040. Let's have a high level look through those five Python files, which are used to power the project. So you can have a better understanding of how they work with one another example.py well this is the main entry point for the code and it's the one that pulls all of the others in together it sets up the hardware for us such as the motor driver led and push button it also handles the loop which monitors the momentary button and starts the homing sequence once we've pressed it think of this file as the control hub it brings all the other elements together and controls when it runs Stepper.py, which is our motor control and homing logic. This file handles everything to do with our stepper motor. The RP2040 and its successor, the RP2050, both usually found in Raspberry Pi Picos, have programmable input output pins. In this code, the PIO is used to generate the pulses for the stepper driver, as well as count how many steps it's taken before it finds a stalled situation. This alleviates some of the overhead and burden from the main CPU by offloading this task to the pin itself. The homing logic also lives in this file, such as how far the motor should turn, how fast, and the logic to determine if a stall has been detected or not. In here, you can also tweak the sensitivity level of the stalling detection. If something in your demo isn't quite working right, 
It's probably in this file that you need to change some of the variables. TMC2209 driver. Now this file handles the UART communication with the stepper driver itself. It defines how to send and receive data, such as the motor speed and stall guard results. It's also responsible for configuring the driver when the project starts up for the first time using this UART communication. Most makers aren't going to need to edit this file. It's a kind of low level helper, which gets on and does what it needs to in the background. TMC2209 UART. This is another low level file, which helps deal with the raw serial communication logic. This is a technical file which formats and passes the data sent to and from our motor driver. It also deals with things such as CRC checks and register addresses. RGB LED manages the onboard LED to give us some color-coded feedback on the status of our program. Together, they make it easy to do senseless homing and tweak it to suit your own project. To run the program, you'll need to open the file example.py, making sure that you open the copy located on the RP2040 and not the one on your computer. You can then click run current script. At this point, pressing the button on your hardware should trigger those homing routines we looked at earlier. Now, if you want the code to run automatically when the RP2040 receives power, rather than having to plug it into your computer and press start in the editor, we can save a second copy of this file onto the device and just rename it as main.py. Any file found by the microprocessor when it switches on called main.py is run automatically. Now, if your setup doesn't behave exactly as you're expecting, there are a few settings, mostly in the stepper.py file, which we can change to tweak it for your situation. If your setup doesn't behave as you might expect, then there are a few different parameters that we can tweak in the stepper.py file. Homing range. By default, the code allows the motor to turn five full rotations in each direction while searching for the end stops. If your motor needs more turns before giving up, increase the value of the max homing revs on line 115. Stool guard sensitivity. On line 341, you'll find the variable K. Increase this value to make stool guard more sensitive or decrease it if you wish to reduce sensitivity. On line 340, the stool guard threshold is calculated as a function of speed. Andrea derived his from tests where he rotated the motor at various speeds with no load. Since the relationship between the stall guard values and frequency was linear in his data, a slope of 0.15, the line of best fit, is used to calculate an appropriate SG threshold between 400 hertz and 1200 hertz. However, your hardware may behave differently, so you might need to experiment with a thick stall guard value, or perhaps create your own function based on your own motor's characteristics. And that's how you get started with senseless homing on the TMC2209 and the RP2040. Hopefully this has given you some understanding of how stall guard works and provided a base and confidence for you to try it with your own projects. I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, like it. And if you're new here, why not subscribe? Otherwise, until the next project, do some good and ciao for now. When it sees the stool guard result drop below your predefined stool guard fresh hard <laughs> with just a four pound <laughs> when the stator's coils are electrized.